Mental enough! Let's get mental! Just for you, Cheetah! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hope you're fine. Hello, I hope you're fine. Okay. Alright, get to work. Okay, enough. Okay, I think that probably gives you a little chance to get out ahead. Alright, so four and eight tenths, seven and eight tenths, eight and one ten. Okay, twenty five squared is six hundred twenty five. Might just be a good thing to commit to memory. Yeah, that's in Then 27 plus 3 is 30, divided by 5 is 6. Alright, then this we can think of as $200 plus $40. Two. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, totally. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Absolutely should have done the half double thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what they were trying to get you to do. Since the number there is 50. Yeah. Alright. So, uh, 20 decimeters is 2 meters, which is 2. Thousand millimeters. Wow. That's, a That's a lot of millimeters. Seen every little milli. They're just little mini, mini milli guys. Then sixty percent. So we could think of that as three fifths, and one fifth is five. So three of those fifths would be fifteen. Wait, is, it huh? is it decimeters or decimeters? Decimeters. Yeah. Wait. Deca decameters would be 10 meters. But then, wouldn't it be 200 meters? No, no because that would, uh, 10 decimeters oh, is mind. 1 Sorry, meter. I, I didn't see it. Okay. And then, <laughs> oh, this seems kind of a gamey. I guess they're just asking if you know what prime factorization is. Oh, yeah? Uh, I, I didn't really get, uh, uh, letter F. Which one? F? F. Oh, okay, well, here, here was my thought process with, with F, was, was, um, instead of 60%, you could say what's 6 tenths, which is the same thing as saying what's 3 fifths. So, 1 fifth of 25 is 5, so 3 fifths of that would be 15. Oh, okay, I got it. Oh. That was my, I mean, you could probably come up with your own thought process for solving it. Yeah, yeah, so that's just my mentally math process. Uh, you could easily have your own mentally math process for getting there, no problem. I guess here they're just asking if you know what prime factorization means because really, it's just two times five, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh no, I messed it up, I wrote five times. How dare you? All right, then. Perimeter would be one half plus one half plus one half plus one half would be two meters. And then the area. Area always feels so strange with a uh, with fractions of a unit. Cause it ends up ends up feeling like it's impossibly small. But yeah. Twenty five hundredths of a meter, otherwise known as one fourth of a meter. Oh I did one. 
beer. Square beer, I should say. What? Yeah. But, um, okay, that's not what we're talking about right now. Okay. All right, so this might be a little reviewy from fourth grade. Always good to go back and revisit. So lesson 70, volume, basically volumes of, uh, of rectangular solids. Okay, so this rectangular prism was constructed of unit cubes. The otherwise known as Cutits! Cutits! Yeah! Cutits! My <laughs> cubic units! Cutits! Yes! <laughs> Glorious. Okay, so what what's the volume here? So, um uh, I'm going to I'm gonna to, to now it, it's good to talk about the base and then and you know uh, times the height, but just for the purpose of these, I'm gonna use the top as the base. Just because you can yeah. see the cunits. <laughs> okay, was that a question? Okay, so, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you people know the formula, or maybe all of you know the formula, but we're just going to kind of break down what's going on here. So first, we'd figure out the area of the base. Like I said, in this case, I'm using the top as the base. So I mean, you could just count them. However, we could also break this down as the as uh, the length times the width, Nine. right? And so, huh? I'm going to get to the height. Yes, but the first thing we're going to do is calculate the base because that's kind of what they're doing with their examples. So, or essentially calculate the area of the base and then multiply that times the height. I guess it works a little better just because once you get to like um, more uh, complex forms, well, once you get to things like uh, triangular prisms and cylinders, mm -hmm. uh, the similar formula. The base becomes important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well just, like, use it as that's a good yeah, thought. Especially very nice, very nice thought. Here, uh, let me give you guys a focus point. Oh, Thank you. Place off. Not a focus point. Okay. So hopefully everyone's already kind of figured this one out. So we've got we've got three going across here. Three going across here, and four going up this way. So. Spoilers, that's going to be three units times four units will equal 12 skewnits. And then we now multiply that times the height, which is three units. So here, here's one thing to note when we're when we're doing this. So we're also kind of multiplying the idea of the units, and so we can think of this as as this has an imaginary exponent of one, right? Yeah. And and so if we've got if we've got sort of an equal value here in this case units. And and we're multiplying we're multiplying them and they both have exponents even in imaginary at one. What do we do with these two exponents? No, we do not cancel them out. We add them. I think that's what you're looking for. Yeah. We add them, getting us our what are the three units? cubic units, also known as well. It, in this room, cunits. Uh, why is the one there on top of the three? The one is there because it's an imaginary exponent of one if there's no exponent. Oh, and so I'm merely illustrating the fact that you're basically taking your your skewnits, 
your square units, but you're also multiplying that by another dimension to three dimensions to get your units. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh -huh. Yeah, so getting you 36 cubic units. Or Q units. Yes? Would you need to use. Would you need to put 3 there? Oh, yeah, you definitely need to put that there. You absolutely need to show that you're talking about cubic units. Okay. Or you are absolutely dead, 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 dead wrong. Dead, 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 Oh, wait, we have a math test tomorrow, don't we? Yes, we will talk about that when I'm done with the video. All right, so looking at this, and yeah, I'm I'm obviously kind of meandering along with this. You see if you can get come up with the volume of this faster than I can explain it. Okay. So I'm going to start by looking into computing the area of my base. And you know, like I said, I'm just gonna use the top as my base. I mean I could I could do something like that and then start like doing, but that's, I don't see the need for that. Okay, so then this being three, oh, let's see, this being uh, five units long and four, it's long here. Okay, but really illustrating this uh, doesn't help that much, really. But what we can do is we can say, okay, well, we are five across and four going back, otherwise known as five centimeters times four centimeters getting us 20 square centimeters as as our base and then we just need to multiply that by our height of think of that as what would be a good color? You red? Right, right. Through this out. You go like that. You call it like that. I right, practically count it. Okay. But really, we just need to multiply by three centimeters. So, 20 times 3 would be 60, then adding our units together, getting a 60 cubic centimeters, or cucums? <laughs> Cucumbers. 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 I know it sounds like cucumbers. cucumbers. I, I couldn't get them to stop saying cucumber over and over again in the first class. Yes? Technically, the answer wanted to find how many cubes, not how many. Oh, you know, that happened. To, I, I missed that this morning, too. Yeah, I forgot. Okay, so our, our answer would be 60 cubes. Oh. Fit in the box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Our our actual question was, in fact, find the number of one centimeter cubes that can be placed inside the rectangular box. So yes, yes, the correct answer would be that 60 cubes can fit in there. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Okay. So, looking at this, so we're trying to figure out the cubic volume of this and oh and these were inches i believe yeah so you could think of this now you know one thing 
about the exponent of three is you know you know how if there's an exponent of two we call that square you're squaring the number because getting that you know is the same formula for computing the volume of a square or, or the area excuse me of a square and so whenever you see an exponent of three the other the term for that is that it's cubed so we can think of this as four inches cubed or four yeah is there which any parentheses to show that it's a uh well you see if i uh yeah it means you, you multiply everything in there now if if i wrote it like this i wouldn't be doing my inches All right so yeah and i'm just i'm just doing i'm just kind of writing it out like this just to sort of uh, emphasize the point that that when we when we see an exponent of three, we say we've cubed the value in there, and that's because it is the same formula for getting the cubic volume of something. So this being equal to four inches times four inches times four inches. And so we can we can do our fours. Four times four is sixteen. Sixteen times four is sixty-four. And we can think that there's an imaginary exponent of one on all these, and so we can just add the one, two, three together. Getting us sixty-four. Cuban. Cuban? <laughs> oh, I, like I know. It. You want to throw them some some guitars and? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it should be sixty four Cubans, right? Like people from Cuba. Anyway. All right. Cubic inches. I don't need an explanation like that. No. I technically I'm kind of joking around. All right, so let's figure out the volume of this shape. Now, there's a couple of different ways to go about this. The really now it's 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 the same as like when you are getting the area of an irregular figure. Remember remember how that goes? Except now we're going three dimensionally, and there's there's probably two methods of going about this. Actually. Uh, people showed me there's really kind of three methods of going about this um, with this particular shape. But you know, one that we're not going to use being you could figure out what the volume of the entire thing would be if this was there, if this was actually like, you know, part of it, and then subtract out the cube that's missing. But... What the book says, and what's probably the really most simp most elegant solution, is compute this and this separately and add them together, just like just like you would with with an irregular shape with rectangles. You make it into two rectangles you could use, right? Yeah, turn into two different geometric solids, get the volume of each of them, and then add them together. I'll give you a moment to work on that. Are you doing this? I did it. Okay. And then I'll, I'll show you a trick that wouldn't work for most of them, but does work for this that the other class pointed out. So taking a deep breath, letting you get out ahead of me, yada, yada, yada. What's the point of it? That's why I'm not putting it front and center. Okay, so going to get this first. So at this point, we're multiplying our three dimensions, our height, our length, and our width. So I guess I'm going to get the base first. I guess it doesn't really make a difference since they're the same. Of 
where oh, I need to clean off my screen or something. All right, then multiplying that times the height. And, and so there we can say what hundred twenty eight. And then, so in case you needed a refresher, since since this is four centimeters, and this is eight centimeters, that tells me that this part is. <gasps> oh, not the question I asked. This oh. is how many centimeters? Well, good lord. Four centimeters! Thank you! <laughs> that was way too much work. So, anyway, um, so basically what this shows, and then uh, same sort of thing for, for here, is since since this is four centimeters and this is eight centimeters, then that means this is also. Thank you. Or basically, we've got another one. We've we've got another cube. Right, and as we talked earlier. That came out to 64 cubic centimeters. Hundred and ninety-two centimeters. Do you want do you want to figure out what the sneaky trick for this one is? Yes, I I I got the area. Oh, wait a second. Oh, no. no, no, no. I was saying that you could figure out like the entire thing, and then subtract this part. But really, this works much better to take this part and this part and add them together. I'm sorry if I made that more confusing than it needed to be. Okay. Okay. All right, because this is pretty straightforward. Right, so you could you could just get the area of the entire thing if this were not missing and then subtract that part out. But for the purpose of this and um, what what the book was suggesting was get the volume put make it into two different parts and get the volume of each one of them and add them together. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Now Okay, it's really time to wrap up I here. Huh? I I didn't by getting three equivalent parts. Oh, okay, that's what I was just about to get to. Yes, sir. Good job. Is is um yeah, as as was pointed out in the earlier class, this is also this these three would be three identical cubes. So you really could have just done yeah, so you and and we we solved for that one over here. Oh. So you really could have just looked at the three cubes and gone. Uh, Oops, what am I doing here? Uh, you could say sixty-four times three. Yes. But you know, multiplication is just repeated addition. So I was, yeah. Yep. Let's get my. All right. Ta da! -da!